The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. In 2015, our own Chabad community in Agura Hills lost a, a gem of a man. His name was Hal Standell. And Hal was a sweet and dearly beloved man who was always happy. He just had this classic smile on his face. He radiated with such incredible joy. And whenever there was singing and dancing going on, Hal and his friend Ned, they would be right there, moving their feet and swinging their arms, lifting the spirits of the congregation even higher. At one Torah dedication celebration, somebody took a picture of Hal clutching a Torah and dancing with this in incredible expression of love and devotion on his face. Now, somehow that photograph went on to become an iconic snapshot. We used it in some literature, some brochure, and then it kind of caught on, and it had a life of its own, and it's still out there. And it has appeared in countless publications around the world to depict the consummate image of a Jew's proud celebration of his heritage. That picture must have been seen by over a million people by now. During the last years of Hal's life, he battled illness, fighting valiantly every step of the way. And even during some of the most difficult stages, he pushed himself with great struggle to be able to come to Shul on Shabbos, because it meant so much for him to be there with all of us, and it meant so much to us, for us, to have him there with us. He would walk into Shul, and you felt the spirit just rise. The joy just, just grew. Needless to say, Hal Standel's favorite yantif, his favorite holiday, was Sukkot and Simchas Torah. Unfortunately, by Simchas Torah of the year 2014, his condition had deteriorated too much, and he just couldn't make it to Shul. But on that Simchas Torah day, I stood up and I addressed the congregation. Some of you that are on this Zoom sermon, you were there. You remember this. And I said, if Hal Standel cannot come to Simchas Torah, what do you say we bring Simchas Torah to him? Sure, we can stay here and we can dance with the Torahs in the comfort of our air-conditioned synagogue, or we can take all these Torahs from their ark, and we could march in the streets of Agura Hills and go to Hal's house and see to it that Mr. Simchas Torah is not left out of the festivities. I didn't even have to finish making the suggestions before people started making their way out the door to begin the procession. It happened to have been a scorching hot day. It was 103 degrees in Agura Hills that day. But we marched with the Torahs held high, with our talasim, with our baby strollers. We marched as a community all along the streets until we reached Hal's house. What words can I possibly use to describe the expression on Hal's face when he saw all of his friends, who had been such a big part of his life for 20 years, showing up at his door to hug him, to sing with him, to dance with him, to celebrate with him on his favorite holiday. Now, this time, there was no photographer on hand to capture that moment. And yet, sick as he was at that time, the look on his face was every bit as radiant as on the day that famous picture was taken. A few months later, April of that year, Hal was back in the hospital. I visited him, and he was in good spirits. And I left hopeful. The morning after my visit, I received a call from the hospital, informing me that Hal was requesting that I come back and see him again and right away. I returned to his bedside. And I have never forgotten and will never forget what he said to me. He said, Rabbi, I will be leaving this world today. They wanted to give me the morphine drip due to the pain. But I told them that I needed to see you first. I just want you to know, Rabbi, how special and how important our community was in my life. It was the happiest place on earth for me. Please, please tell all my friends at the shul that I told you this. Tell them how much I love them and how much they all mean to me. Tell them to keep growing, to keep working on bringing new faces to the shul so that they too can find the joy that I found. Please tell them. Please tell them. 
and just a short time thereafter, the neshama of the soul of Hal of Chaim Herschel ben Shmuel did in fact ascend on high. There is a simcha, there is a joy, there is a unity, there is a bond that exists in the Jewish community like truly no other place on earth. It's the simcha of love. It's the simcha of compassion. It's the simcha of a mitzvah. A Hasidic master once put it this way. On Yom Kippur, we describe how beautiful the songs of the angels are. You've read some of the prayers on Yom Kippur. And it's true that compared to the songs of the angels, the prayers of mortal man must sound pretty feeble. As a matter of fact, there is a very beautiful angel that has a thousand heads. Each of the heads of this angel has a thousand tongues, and each tongue has a thousand voices, and each voice sings a thousand melodies. So the beauty and the harmony of this angel's song is unbelievably heavenly. But you know what the rabbi said? For all of its beauty, for all of its harmony, this angel cannot give a morsel of bread to a hungry person. This angel cannot visit with the elderly. This angel cannot befriend a child with special needs. This angel cannot welcome someone into their home. This angel cannot lift the spirits of those who are down or celebrate with you at the special occasions in life. Only you can. Only we can. And because of this, we're even greater than the most awesome of all angels. Jewish community is like a good sports team. You know, it's nice to have many fans, but you need good players on the field. If you're Jewish, you're not just a fan. You're not just some spectator watching from the stands or cheering us on. You're part of the team. So suit up and show up. We need your bat in the lineup. You can hit, you can pitch, you can field, you can bunt. Every one of us can do something. Everyone without exception can do something to be part of a greater Jewish community. That's how we find that inner joy. By being unified, by being one, by being together, by caring for one another. The symbolism of the holiday of Sukkot is the Lulav and the Esrig and the Hadassah and the Rav of the four species coming together. And with that, we shake them together. We make a blessing, sanctifying the moment. It's symbolic of bringing the entire community, the Jewish community, all spectrums of the community together. Everyone plays a role. Everyone has a role. And that's the way we bring the sanctity. That's the way we bring the blessings from God in. And we're surrounded by the walls of the sukkah, which represents the holiness and the shekhinah and the divine presence. That's the joy that we seek. It's all around us. We have to open our eyes. We have to see it. And we have to open our hearts. And we have to feel it. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.